so you watch yourself and realize I am such an asshole, yeah. but without judgment. <laughs>
And that's when you go, the, the shrink was when the inward journey which yeah. comes with the breakdown. And, and before we get to that, I want to ask you about the um, one of the other journeys that you went on. So obviously there's swimming with whales and yeah. all sorts. But um, what was it about those specific things that you chose? I mean, does each of them touch on an aspect of you that you felt yeah. you needed to connect to? Yeah, I mean, I picked it, ran, you know, everybody will have their own, but I moved in a Christian monastery because faith, which I don't have, would be meaning. Mm. And so I um, wanted to know what it's like to have to get out of your chair because you're so filled with the spirit mm. and go into tongues. Bah, I've tried. Bah, and then scream hallelujah. I want to know what that's like. And it, did it, you it, discover faith? No, it didn't. <laughs> no. I had, that's where I had my breakdown. <laughs> Yeah. What, 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 well, apart, apart from that, was there anything in that search for faith that answered the, quest, the question of the search for meaning? Because obviously a lot of people... If you do have faith, there. they do have meaning. Mm. So I envy, I envy people who have a belief. Mm. But some of it, m most people are free floating. And that's why all these, I, I'm dribbling with excitement, all these people talking about particle physics and talking about quantum realities, that we know it's not just us. But rather than picking a guy called God, and I didn't want them to find out at the monastery that I don't really believe Jesus is the Son of God, don't say anything. I know, he w I know he's delightful and a great speaker, but I can't go there. But um, I wanted to know what it was to hold hands, because every time you're connected with people, that's meaning. Mm -hmm. So there would always be a moment where there was that connection. And then, I, I've, almost like you don't feel worthy, so I'd screw it up. And then, of course, that book would have been okay. It would be, you know, a, a travelogue of inner whatever. But the mental bit made it, gave it the depth. Mm. So you go on all these outward journeys yeah. in search of meaning, in search of uh, a con connection or yeah. whatever it is that meaning could represent. Yeah, like a compassion is another one. If you've got compassion, you've got meaning. So you yeah. bump, you kick it up by mm -hmm. trying to get people. It happened by uh, working in a refugee camp. Yeah. And then somebody slips you, get my family out, and mm -hmm. then you're in a spider web of intrigue. Because mm -hmm. my family was rescued. So I thought, okay, Ruby, pay it back. Mm. And um, I thought that would compassion and faith and silence and all these things would do it. And they did it. Mm. But because of me, I screwed it every time. So when you say, because of me, what do you mean? Well, I mean, I have obstacles that I'm not aware of. Mm. I, I, I say I haven't done therapy. Mm -hmm. And um, and so it took a real genius to pull it down, pull it down. I argued with her the whole time, like, why do I have to be funny? You know, she'd ask me, because I, I thought, I should charge you. This is a one-woman show. So this is the, so this, this is the shrink. So this is the where shrink. we get to the right down And there. the shrink plays in my show. The real shrink does, you hear her voice. Yeah. And so it's the real deal. Oh, that's her actual voice in yeah. the show. Okay, yeah. Okay, because obviously the transcripts are in the book. No, it's the real voice. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, so tell us maybe the lead up to that, you know, the, the breakdown itself. How does that come about? You know, I mean, you said you didn't see it coming, that there wasn't some particular event that sparked it off. So can you describe it for maybe people who don't know much about what that experience would be like? Well, you know, <laughs> you can see people's eyes. Some people know. It's one in four. It's quite a lot of people yeah. in here. You know who you are. And the, um, I can recognize it because I'm used to it now, but you can't fake it. Like a kid can't say it's, you know, their eyes go dead. They don't look sad and they don't look like they're anxious because that's frazzled. That's a whole nother world. But it's a deadness. And so teachers, if they could spot that one and then realize it sticks around, it would be their job to get them to, a, you know, to get them some medication. Yeah. When it's the real thing, not just because they're having puberty. Mm -hmm. So we know what it looks like from the outside and from the inside, it's death. That's why in, over the 15 years, I, not in this show, because this is a play, but um, I always used to have, to have the audience stand up and no matter how big that audience was, people would say, um, pe well, you know what I mean? More and more people started to say it. And, uh, and they, uh, it, it's not so shaming anymore. It's exactly like if you, somebody has Alzheimer's, you don't tell them where are the keys to the car. They've got a disease. And depression is an awful word because it, in, it implies sadness. And it's not sadness, it's living death. And sometimes over the 15 years, people would say, you know, I have cancer. 
and I have depression, and I always say, which is the worst? It was always a depression, because mm. they get no sympathy, mm. and it hurts like fuck, and you don't commit suicide for any other reason. Mm. And can I ask you about, so you go on these outward journeys for a search of meaning, and then the breakdown happens, and you're being forced to go inwards. Um, is there an element of nihilism that's driving this breakdown? What do you sense? No, is... no, you have a disease. Yeah. It's like, you know, people say diabetes. Well, was I in charge of it? And you can win, as we know, some people win an Oscar and then they're dead. So it, do, it is not situation dependent. People have to get it in their heads. I was on journeys. I could have been doing really well in my career. It would still kick in. It's not from exhaustion. Frazzled is what's another book I wrote. Frazzled is the four and four. And if you're not frazzled and living in this world, you're nuts. You're Donald Trump. Um, when, you know, who has no, no connection. And the connection is we're living in a climate that's sick. And so we're picking it up, but that isn't mental illness. That's frazzled, which is, everybody get up and dance, because we hear the music. Mm. <laughs> um, it, you, is that my imagination? There really is music. There actually is music. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should go back to the hospital. <laughs> So you've been a mental health advocate for many years, and I'm curious to uh, hear what you see as the major fault lines in how we as a society talk about mental health, because there's a lot of criticism about still how we perceive it, how it's treated. You mentioned, for example, a lack of sympathy that people might receive because maybe something physiological can be identified as an illness, but when it's in your head, it's much harder for people. Yeah, to but recognize. the head and the body is a onesie. It's an organ. It's like your kidneys. The difference is, is that when you're too stressed, too frazzled, it sends down a message through your body, like it doesn't explode. It goes to the adrenal gland, that's released, and then you're open season for almost every disease. So certain cancers, diabetes to infertility, obesity, addiction, almost every physical disease, unless, you know, it's in the genes. And even that switched on because of that kind of information, then you're um, physically ill. So never negate mental illness because, or mental cortisol overflow because that's where you get ill. So take care of this. And then this will people say, maybe you should eat grapefruits all day. Fuck it. Maybe you should have a six pack. Okay, great. You'll get a couple dates. But if you exercise this, then you have a bigger chance of your immune system's tough and that's all you need. And, and obviously you're um, talking about mental health at a time where many people describe there being a mental health epidemic in our society, right? M many, many uh, people of all ages struggling with mental health issues. You yourself talked about uh, kind of after lockdown, lockdown kind of being a very difficult period for so many people, that being a catalyst for you to go on this search. And you've also talked about this idea that there's something toxic about our society. So, so what is it that's going on that's creating this cauldron right. that seems to be fermenting so much mental health problems among so many of us? But I think everybody would, would know if they analyze it. I mean, a hundred years ago or more, nobody died of stress. They died of bad teeth and old age, which was about 12 and a half, but nobody died of stress. But, but now, you know, and when, a predator would come, you'd get, you know, that, amig that hijack of cortisol. But when the incident was over and you were either lunch or having it, the cortisol would come <laughs> back down again and you go back, you know. Now we're always wired because, first of all, advertisers know if you're wired, you'll buy anything. Um, the news knows you'll keep watching if they keep you on a drip feed of horror. And so they give you more and more details. Uh, it's like a reptile. And it's me. You can't wait to see more because the adrenaline tastes so good. I'm not saying we're not sympathetic, but as animals, we still have that reptilian, that gladiatorial thing. Sorry, I mean, I'm honest. So the trick is, when do you switch off? How much can you take? But because you're reading about everybody on, you know, X or whatever, making comments about it, you think, fuck, I better know this information too. So now, how much are you supposed to know before the machine burns out? What do you have to know? And the fear that you'll be caught not being beautiful or not being popular, or not knowing what to wear. This is like the replacement of, oh my God, something's gonna eat me with big teas. It's the same, you know, it's the same instinct. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.